contracts are annual contracts, but they can be renewed for five, up to five years. Once that five-year period is up, we have to put it back out for a public bid. Um, and when we get one of my cards, I can tell you where to look for that. <coughs> Georgia Procurement Registry is where anything basically over ten thousand um, dollars for a service contract has to be on the <coughs> registry site. Um, so it's not just. GDOT's contracts, but it could be county contracts, city contracts, or any kind of maintenance. Yes, we, well, we have seven districts. We, we divide the state, the state in seven districts. Each one has the same acreage. You know, we purchase, you know, the, the year, we can plant 20 acres in District 1, but we're planting 20 acres in each district. We have to go by how much money we've collected. Wildflower tags go up and down. <coughs> All of you January, February babies, you don't buy a lot of tags. You know why. So our funds go down in January. They seem to peak in the spring babies, and the summer babies tend to buy more wildflower tags. Um, out there. Also, prior to 2010-11, we used to get one time $25 fee. And uh, for a wildfire tag, and you didn't pay renewal fees. The legislature changed that in, I want to say 2010, 2011. Not just for wildfire tags, but for DNR, all tags changed. The, um, your, the general fund, general state fund now gets, well, you pay $35 for that specialty tag, they get everything that we get $10, they get everything else. So, and we do get renewals. I will tell you, our sales, Speak for DNR, but I've heard most multiple uh, specialty tax sales have plenty. Um, where I used to sell hundreds of thousands in the county, um, now they sell two or three sometimes a month. Um, now they're, um, the only thing that's really sustaining us right now is that we get $10 for the new. So the, the uh, diehard supporters who kept their wildflower tags and are paying extra fees or what funding the program is. I don't know, five years from now, you know, is if they change the tags and you have to go get new ones and you have to make a decision if you want to buy a specialty for this, you know, for this extra or you just want to get a typical tag that doesn't cost extra, you know, that could devastate our program. Um, right now, we're, we're at a good level um, with the renewals. I just can't, I'm not sure what will happen after. I know DNR introduced a bill from uh, this legislature to try to change that. Yes, sir. You're talking about in the renewal you were talking about the riparian areas using a, a broad mix of plants there. Um, could that not be done in some of those other areas where it's just one flower in the whole area? You get a mix of things? So like a cosmos, you know, having like a prairie mix? Um, well, we do, a lot more yeah, we do more of a mix of spring mix uh, out there. It is extremely hard to find a flower that, that you can notice in July, August, and September, unless you do mass I mean, does it have to they be? all bloom at different times. Yeah, to me that's much better. I mean, well, but the problem we have is that when you're driving 75 miles an hour down the road, and let's say we have three species and just one's blooming and it's scattered throughout, you're probably never going to notice it. But that's okay. Not the good one. Well, our goal is for you to be able to notice oh, really? it. Yeah. You know, because otherwise we're spending a lot of this money and if you never see it.
She's, she's just asking me what are the tree removal fees that I mentioned. Well, as you know, landscape architecture and billboards go completely together. Um, and uh, a few years back, I was asked to also um, be in charge of the outdoor advertising program in Georgia. Uh, so part of that program, the legislature um, passed some bills that allow uh, outdoor advertising companies come on to GDOT right away and remove trees within 500 feet of their board, of either face. So they have a V-type sign that can go 500 feet this way, 500 feet that way. Um, but it, the law also said there had to be, um, they had to pay for the trees. Um, and I won't go into too much history. This has been going on since 1998. Um, but um, anyway, they, uh, we came up with a pricing chart um, for, for the trees. That money that they pay for when they remove the trees goes into that roadside enhanced beautification fund. And that's what we use for those gateway grants. So that's the, that's the money you're talking about. It is uh, based on the um, appraisal, the appraisal method of the trees. Um, it, is a, it is based on location. Like a tree in the metropolitan area would be worth more than a tree out in the country. It considers density. Trees that are very close together are worth less than a tree that's out by itself out here. Um, and, um, and also the, the diameter of the tree. So it takes in three, four things. And I have a lot of garden club friends here. Um, I know they would love the prices to be way up here. The billboard industry would love the prices to be whole. And we got somewhere in the middle. So um, uh, that's where we are on that. And um, the money, um, like I said, although you need to lose the trees along the right of way, we are able to offer programs where we can put trees back where the public wants you know, where the community can put trees back. Yes, ma'am? Are you the maintenance? I'm in the office of maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, in our county, there's several ditches that I Where and why do we plant the wildflowers where we do? Um, uh, 
lot of times it's just recommendations from our people in our districts trying to come up with a good location they know will be visible to hopefully to both sides of the traffic. Um, like I said, we drill seed, so we have to have a relatively flat area. Um, but we're always welcome to uh, open to ideas of new locations. So, um, like I said, you can uh, certainly get a hold of me, um, and we can try to work it out. We only have limited amounts of you know, acres we can plant it. Uh, same with the daffodils. Um, but we're always willing to look at something new, and if we can, you know, shift something around and plant in a different area, we're, we're certainly welcome to look at it and yeah, see what we can do. Did I understand? One of the challenges I have is getting somebody in South Georgia to drive an hour to take a picture. Okay. You know, so. Do you need volunteers? <laughs> If you, I don't want to encourage you to get off the side of the road, because I certainly don't want anybody to get dirt. Um, but should you ever have a picture to share, we're certainly willing to uh, take it, and I can roll it into our future presentations. Uh, but that's just one of the challenges. Like. gives us donations directly to GDOC uh, for that fund. It goes directly into that fund. No other doesn't go to anything else. Uh, we are uh, we don't have a donation web page or anything because we don't receive a lot of donations, but we are always willing to, to accept them and, and try to, if we can, use them in your area too. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I have a question and a comment. Uh, I'm also the question in the comment. The question is, would you repeat about the tags? Because I really think most people have quit buying the tags because they think it all goes to, the, most goes to the general fund and we don't want to support the general fund. We wanted to support y'all. And then the comment is, if there's a big movement across the country to um, plant natives because of, for so many reasons, but especially because of the huge decline in pollinators and um, 
birds and all those species, you know, we've destroyed so much habitat. And it seems like y'all have more power to do something about that than, you know, us as little individuals. And I just hate to see you planting daffodils when you could be planting wallflowers. I understand, I understand that. Well, one of the things we have to consider about what we plant on the roadway also is the roadway is not a great place for animals. You know, I love the white oak. It is a beautiful oak tree. I never encourage it on an interstate plan because the deer love a white oak also. And we certainly don't want deer uh, near where you're driving. So we have to think of things like that also. Um, it always kills me. I mean, I, we plant the wildflowers, and of course, you see the butterflies, and then you see the butterflies with the windshield. Um, which is not something I like either. But, um, so we have to keep all that in mind also, about what we're planting, what are we encouraging to be out there. Um, I don't want to plant anything where we're going to have flocks of birds out there. And there are some shrubs you can put out there when they have their berries that we're going to have lots of birds, and that doesn't do well with traffic either. Um, as far as the wildflower tag, um, like I said, we used to get $25 when you purchase the tag, that's no longer the case. I think you pay an extra $35 for a specialty tag. We only receive 10 of them. The rest does go back into the general fund. And that's for all specialty tags. And then on the renewal, what do you get? We still get $10 of that $35 that you pay for renewal. Well, we, please let the governor know that the reason why the sales are down is because of that policy. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I hate to bring this up. This is sort of subject to me. But who police the billboard people for cutting all the trees down from the I 95 where I live down in, on the coast? Mm -hmm. uh, somebody's just cut every oak tree possible all up and down the highway, all around the billboards and everything. There so who polices it? Who polices it? Uh, we have area offices, and in those area offices, there are area permit inspectors uh, that go in and Police the work that's being done. I can tell you there has been a lot of activity on 995. Sure unfortunately, um, out there. Um, it's like I said, we were under an injunction for a year and a half. We did a lawsuit. It's been lifted. The industry has been waiting for a year and a half to cut. And we, since we started last October, we are in the process of in different stages of over 400 applications. Or either being cut or going to be cut throughout the state of Georgia. And that's just the time. Just the time. Can you sell that? Can you sell that? We, we do not sell the timber you know, um, out there, but we do collect the revenue for the trees that are being removed. Like I said, that's what goes to the Gateway Grant program. What's the difference in collecting from the trees that are being cut and the trees that are being removed? Well, the trees that, um, I gather what your question was is, you know, let's say you, you cut down 20 trees, you take them to a pulp mill, and you get that price, you know, also. We don't get involved in that. We don't. We're just collecting the, we set a value for the trees and the size and the type, whether they're hardwoods or non-hardwoods. We collect that fee before they ever even go out and do any work um, out there. So that's the money that we're collecting. So actually what you're saying is you get a contract to give you a price and they get whatever they can. That sounds like to me what you're saying. Well, let's say you want to cut 20 trees, you use our chart and based on the size and where they are, let's say it's $6,000, you pay us the $6,000 um, and we also have bonds, we have, we have to do insurance, all sorts of stuff. Anytime you're going to be on the right of way doing an activity like that. We want to make sure we have the right insurance and bonding. So if they do mess up the work, or let's say they drop a tree across the road or do some kind of damage, that so we can make sure that it's correct. Yes? Um, I'm not sure that the increase between the wildflowers, maybe wildflowers, I think that's the market bulletin. So you just told me in, in general, Okay, you said the, the market bulletin is where a good source for, for native wildflower seeds? She said it's a ten dollar year prescription. Yes, ma'am. My question is about the types of flowers that you are planting, wildflowers that you are planting. Are those 
native to Georgia, there may be wildflowers, but I'm not sure that poppies are native to Georgia. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, no. no. Poppies are not native to Georgia. Right. Um, so. Not all of our wildflowers are native to Georgia. Um, part of our I mean, cosmos is, is not native to Georgia. Um, like I said, we have to, we're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. We want to make sure that we have at least some return. Because we're depending totally on Mother Nature. We don't water the wildflowers. There's some years we do everything right, and Mother Nature doesn't give us a helping hand, whether it's a drought or even too much water. So um, we, right now, to try to get the most bang for our buck, so to speak, we try to go with species we know have the best chance of coming up. It's not always natives. You know, that's not to say we're not looking for new species. Um, we, you know, we're always up for any new ideas. Um, the concerns we have to do is we have to buy in bulk. And I have to buy the cheapest. You know, when you're working for the state, and you're bidding out things, you only go with who's got the best price. So, you know, we have, um, Florida has a small um, group of farmers that have come together and have started growing some wildflowers for Florida. Because they have it there in their state law that they have to plant so many wildflowers. So that, that group, that kind of started that whole group. We have purchased some seed from them before. But it's very hard because they're small farmers, their prices are at the top end. And so it makes it very difficult for the state agency to go buy the higher price seed. Uh, but we have worked with them some, you know, the Golden Wave, Coriopsis that I showed you on the coast grows well in Florida, and we've been able to kind of move it up into Georgia. We purchased some seed from them before. Um, but normally it's just who's got the best competitive price. Um, there's a, a great native um, seed company out in Texas uh, that we uh, buy from. I don't think of the name off the top of my head, but uh, so we were able to buy some things from them. Garrett Seed is out of North Carolina. There's another company that we buy a lot of seeds from. Out there. They actually took some of our Georgia Coriolis and took it up there and started planting seeding in bulk, you know, so we can buy it out there. So we're always up for those kinds of things. It's just being state government, I have a few limitations. Um, but, you know, a lot of these things where you can buy, you know, a little seed packet of a native seed, I just, we, we got to buy a lot to, to make it work. 